Hello, everybody. This is the CT Sports Talent Show. My name is Christopher Saunders, and I'm pleased to have on Zach Bonini with me from Enfield. He's a senior football player in Enfield. Currently, currently right now is two and zero coming off a win, rather th- or yes, correctly two and zero beat uh, West Hill and also East Hartford. Uh, and Zach, it's great to be able to have you on, man. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. You know, first and foremost, let's kind of talk about the nitty gritty as far as what happened in the game against West Hill really quick. I mean, great game for you and the team and being 2-0 and and being amongst the top very early on as far as uh, the rankings go uh, in Class L. But if you can, talk about the game a little bit. Um, it was a pretty rainy day, so it was a lot of running the ball. We had a very slow start, went three and out first two drives. Um, ended the quarter, first quarter, 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, second quarter, West Hill came in, scored first drive, and then got the ball end of the fourth quarter with around 44 seconds left. Um, I broke off a big run for around 50 yards and then came down later, threw a 20-yard touchdown pass to one of our receivers, mm-hmm. went to halftime tied, came back out, scored right at a halftime and then scored late in the fourth quarter. And our one of our defensive linemen got a pick that solidified the game with two seconds left, and we won. Very nice. You know, it, it's awesome to be able to kind of recap the game a little bit and give people an idea of what happened in the previous game. You know, now I kind of want to talk about yourself a little bit. Um, I, you know, being able to play multiple positions, we're starting to see that kind of like with Colorado and Travis Hunter playing offense and defense, wide receiver, cornerback, being fantastic at both. Now, for you, it's interesting. Very good kicker, but coming into this season, you were telling me how the quarterback position became open, or at some point it did. You'll kind of you know bring that into light a little bit. So kind of talk about how that quarterback position came to you. So sophomore year, I was strictly kicker, and then – Summer after sophomore year, our head coach, he was my old baseball coach. So he's seen my arm and everything and seen how fast I can run. So um, junior year, I was the backup to a all-conference quarterback, Christian Benvenuto, who went on to play at Westfield State. And so I was the backup. And coming into senior year, it was my, I had the starting job. And then we had a another quarterback transfer from Arizona that came in. And that kind of started a whole competition. So this whole year the first two games like we've been splitting drives going in and out just mm-hmm. rotating the whole season so it's it's been a good competition so far and everything now is it safe to say that you won the quarterback battle is that correct it flips like week one when we played manchester that got canceled after the first quarter i started and i had a slow start so he started against east hartford but then i had the a big game against East Hartford. So I started this week. So it just goes week by week. Now, is that something that's difficult for kind of the quarterback room? Because not that you guys don't know that you're going to play. It sounds like you have an idea and they're trying to give you as much ample time to adjust and prepare and all that. But is it difficult for a player or players because there's multiple quarterbacks to really know like, okay, is it your week? Is it that week? Are we going to do rock, paper, scissors? I mean, this is a pretty unique thing that I'm, I don't know too many high schools and with you guys being two and oh, and have an opportunity to maybe have a solid, if not fantastic year, you already started it out. So kind of talk about that with me a little bit. I think it is pretty hard um, going into each week, not knowing who's going to start. And I also think it's like harder on the team because like, they don't know who's playing. So like, they don't know like what's going to happen and everything. And Mm -hmm. it definitely it's hard, but it so far we've got the job done. You know, one team that I thought of that's in the back, you know, my backyard because I broadcast in the NBL is a team like Oxford. I saw now, if I looked at the numbers, right, they had three quarterbacks who threw passes and they won their game. They're now three and oh, originally they've had two quarterbacks. So again, like you said, and that's a great point. It's hard enough to prepare for one if you don't have the players to, you know, like yourself. If they have to prepare for you, you got to find somebody who has the strong arm, but also the speed. Well, now if you add in another two quarterbacks, now you're, you know, you're really playing mind games with the opposing team and the scout teams and whatnot, right? Yep. Yep, for sure. 
So as we look at kind of the overview of how things came to be for you, man, you know, really quick, the game of, uh, I'm assuming sports, because I heard you, you know, you're a very good baseball player as well. You got a strong arm. I know you play other sports as well. Um, how did sports find you? It's just something I've ever, something I've done since I was a little kid. My parents got me into sports at a young age and I've just fell in love with them. So I've played them ever since. Mm -hmm. And what was the one sport that you uh, you found to be the most fun at a young age? Um, definitely basketball when I was at a young age. But as I grew up, I learned I was like um, better at um, baseball and football. So mm -hmm. it's mostly been just those that I've really focused on. Okay. And as you entered high school at Enfield, um, was there a particular sport that you felt like you know, early on that was going to be maybe a little bit more difficult, maybe because how the program was run, because there were so many kids, obviously a lot of talented players. Was there one that maybe was a little more difficult in the beginning or were they both hard? Um, Definitely more baseball, just because like the team was better and everything and the football team wasn't really all that. So it was definitely baseball because there was a lot more competition there and a lot more better players so you mentioned football how maybe it was a little bit kind of on the slower side right so how did when did the turnaround really come for Enfield because you guys right now are 2-0 and and have opportunities to be able to like I said who knows I mean right now I know it's early it's never too early to you know talk about the playoffs but you guys right now are amongst the top in class L which is again a gauntlet if you lose one game you could drop down to eight or either farther down because of, you know, you start getting with, with the points and who'd you lose to and all that other stuff. It gets confusing. But when did Enfield football make that switch? I think for us, it was last year, junior year, because my sophomore year, we had an 0 and 10 season. So, and last year we came back, we went three and seven and we lost, I think it was four games by less than six points each game. Mm -hmm. So we could have had a much better season, but it was just, I think that was a real turnaround year. And so far this year, it's been going up from there. During the off season and, uh, you know, during the winter times, and I know now, did you play basketball or no? Basketball up until last year. Okay. So you did play last year, correct? Mm -hmm. So you probably were not around or maybe you could when you were able to, to work out with the team and such during the times that you were able, but during the summertime, when you were able to focus on conditioning and whatnot, what was it like as far as preparing for this upcoming season with your teammates? I think everyone was just, everyone was focused in as they knew that um, it could be a turnaround year. Everyone was, we had way more people showing up for workouts. We had basically the whole team there every single day. So it was just a lot more focus and a lot more like knowing we could have a good year. For you specifically, now, I know you mentioned the quarterback situation. It sounds like it happened later on, you know, into preseason and then beginning of the first couple of games here. But did you plan on being just the kicker heading into your senior year? No, I knew at the end of my junior year around there that I was going to be playing quarterback for most of my – or for my senior year. So mm -hmm. it all really started, like, right after my junior season ended, planning on – and working out as quarterback, like going to the field, doing drills and stuff and all that. How did you prepare yourself mentally and physically for being potentially the starting quarterback or at least being a viable option? How did you prepare for that? Getting in the weight room more, going to every single workout, and I would go to the field um, like four or five times a week with the, mm -hmm. the other starting QB, Christian Benvenuto. I would work with him all off season. We would like study the playbook, watch film, like read defenses and all that, and just get to know like quarterback more. Now, when you were going about, and I think that's awesome because a lot of times, let's be honest, right? There's there's that competition. Sometimes either the quarterback or the cornerback or the running back, they don't want to work with their opponent because you're trying to beat that guy because there's only one running back you can switch in and out. Quarterback, although it sounds like that kind of sounds like the same thing with Enfield. More often than not, it's one quarterback for the entire game. So there's that competition. So when you and him, you and Christian, you said, correct? So when you and him were working together, both with the playbook, studying defenses, training and all that, 
did you feel like, and I'm sure he would agree if you're mentioning as well, that the, you know, the relationship as far as teammates, the bond, much different than some others, right? Definitely. We, yep. Because we both helped out the team as much as we could. And we definitely made the team better knowing that both of us can do good things on the field. When you were reading defenses and you were watching film, who had the better eye for reading the defense? Was it you or was it him? It was definitely him because, like, it was his senior year. He'd be playing quarterback his whole life, and he was going off to college. And mm -hmm. he just, like, he knew the position better because I really started focusing on it junior year. Mm -hmm. So he had been doing that his whole life. He had, like, he could pick out every little thing in the defense, and I definitely learned from him. So now I can do, like, more of that when I watch film and everything. When you play quarterback, is it, and I don't mean this in an in, in a insulting way by any means, but because you're so raw, you're going to rely on your athleticism first, right? Because you have the speed, you have the ability. If the first read's not there, you're going to go, right? Kind of like an RPO, run pass option. You know that very well. So for you, are you kind of in that stage where it's okay? First read, okay, he's not open. I'm just going to tuck it and go because I've got the legs. I can I can run. Uh, is that correct? Definitely. I definitely think that's correct. If I don't see a read, I'm just going to find a seam and try and very, uh, break off a big run and get as much yards as I can. Now, when you have, because you got the strong arm and this kind of falls back to prime example, I, the amount of college football games I watched yesterday, there's some, there's some guys who can really sling it, but sometimes they rely too much on their arm. And that's where the dangerous throws come in. The 50-50 balls that are maybe shouldn't be 50-50, they should have been thrown away, the picks and so on. Has that been a part? I know you haven't had a lot of reps yet this year, but has that been something you've maybe caught yourself not trying to let it fly too much? Definitely on, for sure. If I don't see it and I don't think it's there, if it's a 50-50 ball, I'd rather just take it, get yards, you know, like get for sure yards and keep the ball. So, yeah. How is the... Uh, how is your touch with the football? And what I mean by that is the short game, the long game, the mid range game, right? Short intermediate passes, the bubble screens. Do you feel like that's something that still has to be worked on? Because again, it goes back to like in baseball, got to have the touch in the field. There's a difference between, you'll know this between control and command, right? Control is just being able to throw within the strike zone. Commanding it is okay. If I want to dot the outer half of the plate, if I want a backdoor slider, right? You got to be able to do that. That takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, a lot of repetition. Are you able to have that touch with the football or is that still a work in progress? I definitely think short game is where I'm more like comfortable and accurate because they're nice, easy, short throws. And we work on those a lot of practice. We do a lot of RPO drills, like little like routes and stuff. And the deep ball is definitely good too. It's not as accurate just because mm. – I haven't, I don't really work on it as much, but definitely RPO game is where I feel comfortable. The RPO game, I think is very, not just, I think it's kind of gone, gone beyond the unique stage because so many people are running it, but I think it helps quarterbacks like yourself and others, because not everybody is blessed with being six, five, six, six, and can read defenses from under center. So I think it gives you the option of now, as long as the center can snap the ball correctly, which most of them can you can kind of look at the defense as you're making the play call, you're communicating with your running back, or if you're in a 20 personnel and you've got two backs, because I've seen that as well with an RPO game where now you're really trying to play mind games with the DC. So the RPO game, do you feel like that kind of fits your, your skill set right now? Definitely. It's yeah, definitely because um, our OP, our OP, our RPO game is a lot of pre-snap reads. Mm -hmm. So, and if it's not there, either hand the ball to the running back or make a run read, either I pull the ball. So mm -hmm. it's a, our playbook is a lot of RPO. So it's definitely something I work on a ton and have gotten used to. Nice, man. Nice. Hey, I appreciate you coming on. This has been a lot of fun. Before I let you go, what should people anticipate? Because like you said, two years ago, you guys were 0-10, correct? Yep. Last year, you said three and seven. So you're making the progress. So in all anticipation, Enfield, if I'm sure you guys get a lot of fans at your games, are probably anticipating 
this could be a season that we could pop and really surprise some people. Because when was when was the last time that Enfield has made a playoff appearance for football? I'm honestly not sure. Okay. I'm assuming it must be a while then if you don't know. Yeah, I think okay. so. So kind of like New Milford last year that made the playoff for the first time in forever, I feel like is – I know it's too early and you guys are not thinking about that, but it has – could that potentially be something that goes into your guys' minds if you continue this progression? Because you could be making history. It's definitely been something that the whole team has thought of in the off season of making it to playoffs and starting two and zero is a really good start. So we're that's what we're focused on right now is playoffs and obviously just taking it one game at a time and trying to win as many as we can. Zach, I appreciate you coming on. Best of luck as far as the rest of this season. And keep doing your thing as the kicker. I know we didn't talk about that, but the quarterback thing is obviously unique. And I know you can drill it from basically anywhere kicking-wise. But congratulations from you, man. And hopefully you have a strong rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Always. Now, wrap things up here in the CT Sports Town Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connected Talent. I'm enjoying find them all. Good there, should everybody. And be well.